Gilbert. Um, I do want to thank the sponsor of this Meet the Miniaturist. When I was trying to figure out what, like, Hello and good afternoon. How is everybody doing? Welcome to this very special edition of Meet the Miniaturists. Good to see everybody. Wave hello. Say hello in the chat box. You guys know the scoop. Unless you're new. I would love to know if you're new. Um, yeah, if you're just joining, you've never been to a Meet the Miniaturists before, talk to me in the chat box. I'd love to hear from you. Welcome, welcome everybody who's joining. Um, yeah, we're gonna wait a minute. Hi, Benny. I know that name. Um, anybody who's new, let me know. Um, and also, what a little bit, tell us what a little bit about what drew you to this specific um, topic, if you will, before I get into it. Um, hey, Carol from Arizona. Good to see you. Welcome, folks who are joining. I'm just going to wait another minute. Hey, Knoxville. Hi, Sharon. Awesome. You guys are great. Howdy, 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 Lynn. Whidbey Island, I know Whidbey Island. I have a really dear friend who lives out in Seattle. I actually moved just from Seattle, but anyway. Hi, Pat, good to see you. All right, I'm gonna do some housekeeping stuff before we get into um, the, the topic. But if you've never been to my Meet the Miniaturist or you wanna um, you know, see some replays from some past Meet the Miniaturist, we're gonna go ahead and put the link in the box right there. Um, to let you know where to go to see the replays, or if you want to, if, if you haven't caught it, um, you could see them. If you want to catch it again, go and see it. Hey, Kim, good to see you. Awesome. Yes. Keep putting information in the chat box. I love reading these, even though I don't respond to them right now. I will get to them. Tell me who you are. Tell me about yourself. You know, tell me about what drew you here. I love to hear from you. So chat away. Um, also, if you didn't know, I have a very special patrons club um, that I, I have been assembling. If you want to become part of the patrons club, we're going to put a contribution post in the, in the chat box, in the, um, in the message box there, in case you want to contribute to my patrons club. We had a very special patrons club event last week, or was it a week and a half ago? Um, and I'm constantly looking for sort of content to build around this sort of patrons club. Um, so this, this specific patrons club event was all about my recent visit to uh, the Museum of Arts and Design in New York City to see the Joanna Fisher Dollhouse exhibition, which was unbelievable and i basically give um you know sort of my my thoughts and observations around that visit so check that out or well, contribute contribute and then i'll send you a link actually to see it if you're really interested um and then um big the big piece of this is oh if you want to follow me on the social media i'm going to put links into all my social media channels and i feed almost all of them as much as possible um between youtube instagram um Twitter, not so much, but I do post some stuff on Twitter. But anyway, I'm going to post uh, my my uh, links to all my social media in the box there. And then um, finally and bigly, is that a word? Um, I do want to thank the sponsor of this Meet the Miniaturist event today. Uh, the sponsor is HBS um, miniatures.com. If you don't know about miniatures.com, they have been around for many years. They've been around since the 70s. Um, and they basically have almost anything you'd ever really need um, if you're starting a dollhouse project or a miniatures project. Um, and they're, they um, are very generous in terms of their discounts that they offer, always having sort of some sort of great reward for consumers and folks. So in fact, this Meet the Miniaturist sponsored by HBS, there is a special offer and we're going to put the promo code in the chat box basically 20 percent off which is a really nice um promotion for the viewers of this meet the miniatures so check that out the promo code is mtm20 and um go shop away and thank you to um to hbs miniatures.com for sponsoring this event because it's it's awesome to have great sponsors like them and you know i've been i mean i i i, I mean personally you know i would just love when those catalogs um, came in the mail and I would like scour them and devour them and always look at them. So they're just awesome. So yes, thank you to hbsministers.com. So with that, I'm going to go ahead and share my screen and we're going to talk about today doors. <laughs> you know, uh, you know, when, when I was trying to figure out what, like, 
what are some of the topics that I like to talk about and then ultimately what I think folks like you would be interested in hearing about. You know, one, one of the things that really fascinate me in this world of miniatures is um, this whole idea about doors. Um, and I don't know why they fascinate us. They fascinate me. I'm, I'm assuming that you guys are fascinated by it as well um, because you're here. Thank you very much for joining. Um, so we're gonna get into sort of the whole idea around miniature doors in the next 40 minutes that we have together. Why do we love them? Why are we fascinated by them? What do they do for us? You know, outside of the miniatures world of, you know, the actual dollhouse or the piece, we're gonna get a little, we're gonna dive a little bit deeper into what is it about the mini doors that makes us so, I don't know, it, it thrills me. And I would love to, you know, chat away guys, what do doors do for you? Um, you know, and I'm gonna, we're gonna, this is gonna be open for, um, for questions. So I'll be taking questions throughout. Um, I'm gonna get into a little bit of the history of miniature doors. There's not a lot out there, but I'm gonna try to like bundle it up and talk a little bit about how we got here with miniature doors. I'm gonna go through, you know, the pop culture, success of doors um yeah like you know how they re how miniature doors are out there in the pop culture world um we're gonna we're gonna i'm gonna help you make sense of mini doors if you're looking to start a project or looking to do a dollhouse or get involved in miniatures or even continue your world of miniatures we're going to talk about you know how, how you can make sense of it how you can expand on the door options that are out there. We're gonna talk a little bit about mini trends. I'm gonna bring on a very special guest. We have a lot to do in this next 40 minutes, but um, bringing on a surprise special guest um, to talk a little bit about doors. And then we're gonna end up with uh, a little bit about the tiny door movement. If you don't know about that, we're gonna talk about that. And then finally, I'm gonna share some of, um, some cool doors that I think are really cool. And I hope that this inspires you. I mean, the whole intent behind this specific talk is really to get you inspired um, and get you your mind working and thinking, whether you have an existing dollhouse or miniatures world, um, or, or if you're, you're planning to start a new one, and just to think a little bit more about the door because they can be really cool. So let's, let's go. So as I mentioned, um, this is sponsored by hbsministers.com. Yay, go ministers.com. And then of course the promo code MTM20, 20% 20 off your next order, which is kind of cool. Thank you very much. But I wanted to start off with this lovely tiny video, which is done by Mono Mini. Um, I believe this artist is out of Asia. I'm not 100% sure because the Instagram account is all in different language. But anyway, I, um, uh, we're gonna put the link into her, I think it's a her, forgive me if it's not, um, to Instagram account, but this just um, represents the wonderment of miniature doors and, and how they lead us to other worlds of wonder. Um, I mean, if you think about miniatures themselves, they are magical, but then when you add another window that is between you and the miniatures, like a door, um, it tends to sort of have a reveal to it, which makes it that much more exciting. So I, I just thought that this was just a really wonderful way of like showcasing doors as, as um, portals to open your imagination and open your thoughts. I just, I, 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 yeah, I hope you agree. But anyway, okay, so that's Mom, Mono Mini. We're gonna go, and there's also one other way, and I'm gonna share, this is Lisa Heitman. And I'm gonna leave the, I'm gonna leave the sound on. I hope you can hear it. But um, she's a miniaturist uh, on Instagram, and she created this. Uh, she created this door, and I'm sorry, you probably can't hear it. I wish you could, but um, this post is actually on my Instagram account, so you can find it. But essentially, it is a fully latching door. Okay. So you can actually physically hear it latch. Um, and so I, I, I apologize, I thought you could hear it, but you can't. But I just think that not only is it a door, <laughs> which is kind of cool in the miniatures world, but this one, you can actually hear it close and open. And it's just, I, I, you know, anything that moves or operates like a, a real thing in real life in miniature um, just makes me that much more thrilled when I see it. So yeah, check that out. It's really cool. Let me see if this one for some reason. 
No, I still can't hear it. So I apologize. I'm going to keep going. But let's talk a little bit about the history of the mini door. There really is not a lot of physical history that you can research. But the, kind of my observations on this is that, you know, if you think about the Renaissance era, which is really the birth of the modern dollhouse as we know it today, back in the 1500s and the 1600s when they had dollhouses and they weren't really called dollhouses, they were cabinet houses. These were owned by very wealthy women of a certain social class and status. And they had these miniature, they were called baby houses or cabinet houses. They had these miniature cabinets filled with their mini treasures. The idea was not to have a physical structure per se, that like a dollhouse. It was more about creating a structure that would house, house a lot of their tiny treasures. And so it really wasn't about the door necessarily back then when they were first introducing miniatures. There might have been some windows, there might have been some doors, but they were of less importance uh, back then at least when, when this whole thing began in terms of dollhouses and miniatures. It wasn't really until sort of the 18, late 1800s, the turn of the century, we started to see more primitive dollhouses, more in the shape of real homes that we would, we would um, know and recognize. Um, the art was pretty primitive. The scale was a little off, but they included doors. You did have the doorway because of course you had, this was a representation of a full-size home. So, you know, you started to see the door emerge, at least. You could see a door, you could see its shape, you could see its architecture. Um, but it really wasn't until, I would say, the early 1900s, the turn of century, when we started to see doors emerge as more important pieces or more important elements in the miniatures world. This, of course, if you guys know what this is, raise your hand, the Thorn Rooms of Chicago, which is, I don't know if you guys, if, if anybody out there who does not know, these are probably some of the most fantastic miniatures in the entire world. Um, they are about a hundred boxes, room boxes, that are in the Chicago Art Institute, created by Narcissus Blackthorn. She was a socialite, she was an interior decorator, um, and she looked for ways to sort of shrink down interior design so that she can expose that and educate the masses. And so all of her room boxes were architecturally accurate. And by that, they also included doors. And so one of the most amazing things about the Thorn Rooms is, is their architectural accuracy. And so if you zoom in on the doors, you're gonna see that <clears throat> they are architecturally accurate and they're beautiful. But there's also another very special way that she incorporated not only her windows, but her doors. Um, as far as being portals to open the mind and expand the depth, illusion, and dimension. If you'll notice, this is her shaker room from uh, circa 1800. She left a lot of her doors a little open so that you can look through and you can actually get a sense of scale and, and wonder and, and think, well, what's behind that? So uh, she really used the doors not only as architectural elements, but as part of the artistic design to help the viewer transport them into this other world. And she did this so beautifully. So this is more of a close up of the shaker room and that door in the back, which is just, to me, is um, just the embodiment of, of miniature wonder, if you will. Um, but so check it out if you haven't been to the Thorn Rooms. Crazy amazing. There are about, there are 68 of those rooms at the Chicago Institute. She made about a hundred of them. There are a few others at some other museums around the country. Um, and if you get to see them, you will just be amazed by them. Not only again, by the architectural beauty, but you know, these doors, doors are everywhere. They're everywhere. Not only exterior doors, but interior doors. So look for them. She was a master uh, at creating these interior designs. And she had um, en encouraged some of the, the most um, artistic and talented craftsmen of the time to create these interiors for her, for these room boxes. So check those out. And this is just an example of how they actually decorate the doors and some of the room boxes for Christmas at the Chicago Institute. It's a great time to go see the room boxes, um, all decorated and created. And I mean, if you just look at this one door, I know it's one, two, three, four, it's an eight panel door, which is kind of like stunning. And we're gonna get into a little bit about all of the detail that you can embellish a door with to make it that much better in a little bit. But really 
you know, it wasn't until we started to see the dollhouse kit that the door became an actual part of the entire ensemble of a dollhouse. So maybe the 40s, the 50s, um, the dollhouse kits today, doors are a major part of the miniatures world today, if you will. But not only are they in the dollhouse world per se, they're also popping up in pop culture. Uh, I like how I did that. Um, this is an example of some work by a, a, an artist named Ryan Monahan, uh, Ryan Thomas Monahan. Uh, he is out of the, I believe he's out of the Illinois Midwest area, definitely. Um, and he does some wonderful work in miniature, but his doors are that much more over the top. Um, not only does he do sort of like these commission works, uh, doors that maybe exist in 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 his in his mind um but he does these doors that are based on pop culture so if you recognize this door put it in the box right now it's a very famous door for, based on on um, a very famous television series come on i'm gonna give you a second i know you can do it i know you can do it come on someone all right i'm gonna go <laughs> yes good job See, it's, I think it takes a little time before the, before the chat box pops up, but I, I'll do the next. Good job, guys. It is its friends. And this is also a famous movie of a, of a famous door from a famous film. Oh, it's written right there. Damn. Anyway, this is from The Shining. Um, and not to be outdone, the, the girls had an apartment door done in miniature. Now Chandler and Joey have their door in miniature. Essentially, um, what, what I think artists like Ryan have done with these doors is he's actually been able to expand the awareness of miniatures uh, and also tack on miniatures as sort of an art form um, and expanding it outside the dollhouse and miniatures world, which is good for everyone in this world of miniatures um, because it just gives us more to look at. So he's done a really great job, I think, of creating these beautiful tiny doors and um, and helping to sort of grow awareness of miniatures. So yeah, he's awesome. Awesome. We're gonna put the. We're gonna pop his Instagram account uh, uh, right there. And if you know, if you're not on Instagram, you can search for these guys. They have most of them have websites too. And I really encourage you to check them out. They're super super talented. If you think about trends in the do indoors, um, there. You know, I think trends, especially today. Uh, in, in today, um, the miniatures world is is looking towards the real world for, for ideas and, and inspiration. So things like shabby chic um, and modern farmhouse and mid-century modern, you know, when, when the miniatures world started, it was all Victorian, that was it. And now it's all about what can we be inspired from the real world to do in miniature? And believe it or not, it's coming full circle around and actually Full-size designers are looking at miniatures for inspiration, but that's a whole nother talk and a whole nother topic. Um, but I, I'm going to take I'm going to take questions in about two minutes. I'm going to go through this trend piece, and then we'll take questions. So fire them up, and I'll get to them. Um, so what I'm saying is, is if you look at trends in the big world, in the big world, you'll see they're actually can happen in the mini world. So one of the biggest trends actually out in there in the big world is this idea of painting your house door, your real house door, different colors. And in fact, the real estate world is sort of super focusing on that as a way to help drive interest in a house that's for sale. So you're seeing a lot of this happen and I think it's awesome, but you're also seeing the idea of colorizing a dollhouse door in different colors as, as also a trend and just also just really making it fun. This is an artist, her name is Faye Kids, Faye.Kids, she's out of Belarus. And she does the most adorable, wonderful, sweetest doors. And she paints them in lovely, lovely, sweet colors. And they're very much on trend with what's happening in the big world. And that's why I wanted to share this. I just, I love her work. I love her whole aura and um, definitely check out her site um, because I think some of her work is just lovely, lovely. And you know, her photographer is pretty good too. Um, yeah, so we just pop that in there as well. Um, let me see if there are any questions. Yep, Lori got the shining. That is true. It was shinings and friends. Um, oh, good. I, I see what you guys. Yeah, if you guys just tell me what you're working on these days, I like to see what 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 you what you're doing as well. Okay, so we're gonna go on. Um, so check out Fake Kids out of Belarus. You know, another way to um, really capitalize on the door, you know, as as an interesting 
portion of your miniatures world is holiday. You know, I mean, just especially if you have an existing, let's say dollhouse or room box, a lot of people, they have their dollhouses, it's set up, it's done, quote unquote, done. I would argue it's never really done. Um, but, and I, I would argue that it's, it never should be really done. I know I might get some crap for that because, you know, I think, um, I think you always want to continue to play. And I think doors are an easy way to sort of get your mini fix on. And I'll tell you how. This is an example of, obviously this is Halloween. This is, you know, it's, it's fall to, you know, put out some, some relevant holiday things, put a wreath on the door. Christmas is another really um, great time of the year. And you could start in July <laughs> to, to um, put decorations up. How much fun is that? But the door is a great sort of focal point that you do so much with, which is another reason why I love, um, I just, I just, uh, I love doors, you can tell. I wanted to share a, um, a little door that I made for the Hudson River Museum, uh, Nibblewick Hall, which is their 26 room mini mansion uh, on permanent view. And if you guys are in New York ever, this is really a must see. Uh, it is, like I said, it's a mini mansion. There are many, many rooms. And what I did was I created a tiny, 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 tiny little door. I don't even know what scale it is, probably 144. Um, and just a fun, fun way to uh, use doors as a, as a focal point during holiday time. So encourage you to do that. But of course, there are lots of, of options around doors and it could be a little bit overwhelming. So I wanted to sort of like, maybe take a step back, regroup and maybe make a little bit of sense of all that's out there. These happen to be doors that are sold by miniatures.com. They basically wrote the book on manufactured doors. They developed them many years ago and they're still in production today. And the reason is because they're, they're perfectly proportioned, they're well-made and they work. So there are a lot of different design options out there, um, but they basically have all of them. And there are a couple of them that are kind of like on the newish part, like the, the, the upper right-hand corner is, is sort of a cottage door, which also could be a, a hanging barn door, but there are lots of options. But I guess the, the point is, you know, there are, the, figure out what you want and then go and design and decorate it the way you want. This is an example of one of those doors that I just shared that is, was um, embellished and um, really decorated by Adam Koch. I don't know if you know who he is. He is an amazing dollhouser out of also the Midwest, a lot of Midwesterners. Um, and he has, a, has an account called Dollhouse Therapy. Check him out, check his work out, really wonderful stuff. This is actually an older, it's, it's, I, I don't have the name of the model, but this is an older model, but look how he's contemporized it, contemporized it really, really wonderfully. So I encourage you to check out the doors, incorporate them into your mini world and think about what you could do with some of these doors. Um, this is the barn door that I was talking about, which another really good thing about miniatures.com is that you can actually go online and they have tutorials. We're gonna to link to the tutorials, but you can actually learn how to make this. It's not a barn door, it's, it's a, it is a barn door, but it's, it's a swinging barn door. Check it out. It looks relatively simple to make, um, but it's, 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 how much fun is that? I just love it. I love it, I love it, I love it. But check out miniatures.com because they do have a whole section on tutorials. So um, you could learn a lot, you can incorporate a lot, you can do your own thing with that. Talking about like special projects, talking about what you could do with doors. Um, we are tra we're tracking a little early because I didn't get any questions, but I'm gonna, I wanna bring on a special guest because um, I wanna talk a little bit about what you can possibly do, what kind of projects you can do with doors. And with that, I'm gonna introduce my very special get guest, May Burnett. Um, let me tell you a little bit about May. Actually, I'm, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna, um, I'm gonna, yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna unshare. I'm gonna stop sharing my screen so I can bring May up. 
um, because wh what I wanted to do is like inspire you guys to take on other projects. Doesn't necessarily have to be a full on dollhouse or a full on room box. And just a little bit of how I know May. May and I go way back. She's a dear friend. She's an artist. She's an art educator. She runs a fine art project up, a program up in a wonderful summer camp upstate New York. And we've worked together. In fact, we, we're gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna let her tell us a little bit about herself. And then we're gonna talk about her awesome project, her awesome mini door project, which is around steampunk. So, hi, May. <laughs> hi, Darren. <laughs> Thank you for joining this special event. Oh, plus we were on a program together. We were on an HGTV program together. We were partners, so we go way back. And we also had donuts this weekend together. <laughs> yeah. yes, tell, we us, <laughs> tell us a little bit about yourself and then you're gonna share with us the project that you created uh, around this doors. <laughs> yeah, sure. Hey, everybody. Hi, my name is May, and I was Darren's teammate on Biggest Little Christmas Showdown. Go green. Woo -woo. Uh, during the school year, I'm an elementary school art teacher. And then during the summer, I run the Fine Arts Building at Long Lake Camp for the Arts. And in between, I find time to make tiny little things. <laughs> yes, you you love miniatures. You are I do. Full stop. I do. I do. I've got a tiny gallery. I make tiny ceramics. Um, and I pass that love on to kids, yeah. whether it's at camp or at elementary school. We make tiny rooms and stuff. Yeah. So yeah. Yeah, tiny everything. Tiny baked goods. Yeah, Donna. <laughs> That's what I love about what you do is you have a love of miniatures, but you're also sharing all that with the young people, which is how we grow this mini world. Exactly. Um, and you also have such a broad range of interests in the mini world from, I know you have this amazing obsession with tiny um, ovens, right? We talked about that. <laughs> yeah. um, but you also like love tiny foods. You also mm -hmm. do ceramics. Um, so let's talk about doors. And you also had this real love of steampunk and I that whole thing. Can you talk just a little bit about steampunk, what it is, how it ties in with the Victorian era? era? Oh, all right, all right. So um, besides, I'm like a serial hobbyist. So there's lots of things I like. And one of the things I like is the Victorian era. I love the bustle skirts. I love the rich fabrics. I love the costuming. And I love the... Uh, the um, cast iron stoves and all that stuff. And so when I found out about steampunk and what steampunk kind of is, is think, um, think futuristic or even modern, but with a, if a steam, a, a Victorian aesthetic. So instead yeah. of things being powered by, you know, tiny little batteries, maybe it's powered by some green mysterious fluid that's bubbling away or things are powered by steam instead of by electric motors, you know, that sort of thing. Yeah. And um, I just love that aesthetic and building and creating that way. Um, so I have taken part in several like uh, steampunk conventions. I've made the costumes and it also filtered its way down into my love of tiny things. <laughs> Yay. And that brings us to your steampunk door. Yes. Let's yes. talk about the steampunk door. Ta-da! <laughs> so this was actually, in, this was the impetus for a class that we did a few years ago when I had a workshop. So and, and this is what I want to explain to people about, you know, that doesn't have to be a dollhouse door. It doesn't have to be a dollhouse. It doesn't have to be a room box. It could be just a door for the sake of, it's a door and look how fabulous it is. All right, so Let's tell see. us, tell, talk. Oh yes, yeah, okay. And it's a working door, guys. <laughs> oh, another world. <laughs> oh, I just, I, tell us, tell us all the different materials that you use to create this door. All right, so you have your general off-the-shelf door, wooden door from, um, well, I got it from you. Miniatures.com <laughs> 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 does have these doors. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, then I, of course, had to make a trip to Michael's. <laughs> and they have these wooden discs that are laser cut. So as you can see, I grabbed several different kinds of wooden discs embellished that way to make my stairs and the finial, I guess. 
And then of course, that means I have to go to Joanne's and I go to their scrapbooking section. And that's where I got the gears and the clock parts. And then you also have a door knocker and door handle, which I believe are also from miniatures.com. <laughs> and then um, chain again from like Joanne's or Michael's in the jewelry section. Um, these bars that hold the like wooden bar in place are actually from um, uh, the sewing section. It's a hook clasp for, for like the back of your skirt. <laughs> and then the rivets are just um, slick paint, dimensional paint oh. that you also get at like Joanne. Yeah. spent a lot of time there. Joanne and I are like that. And um, then I painted everything copper because if you're steampunk, you got to go with the copper and the brass vibes and then just aged it with uh, black dry brushing and maybe a little green. Um, and yeah, and then this little piece of wood is actually a piece of, I think it's balsa. Okay. And I just cut it away so it fit with the gears so that I can open the latch that way and I also kept it flat on back because it fits really nice like against books or on a bookshelf or up against the wall so it looks like it's a little door to another dimension yeah <laughs> I I you know I'm just so hey, I'm, sorry. it's so swoon worthy and I just I love Thank it so you. much I loved it when we when we had the class on it talk a little bit about how this is not people can do this they oh, can do yeah. this right talk a little bit about you know it, it, this is not difficult. And it's also interpretive. It does not have to be exactly like this. And that's what's so great about the whole idea behind steampunk, right? Yeah, yeah. it's all about uh, finding, finding your vibe. And uh, for me, that's like finding lots of tiny things and bringing them together. I made like fairy catching kits out of the jars and did a workshop with the kids at your place. That's right. Um, doing, because Victorians love that whole like occult stuff and fairies. Yeah. So the thing with the doors, when we had our workshop, you know, I'm going, you know, I showed the basic how to's, but at the end of the day, you're the artist. And that's what I tell the kids. You're the artist. Yeah. You get to make the decisions. Yeah. Is that what you want? I'm going to show you how, but then, you know, take it in your own direction. Yeah. And so even though I gave people the same stuff that you see here, I think all our doors were a little bit different they depending were. on the person. They were. And that's what's so great about it. We did get a request to see the door open again. Okay. See that one. So, yeah. I will say, because we were talking about copyright earlier, that. <laughs> yes. I did make this for myself. I have, you know, as you could, made it years ago, not selling it or anything. Uh, so the artwork. <laughs> The artwork inside is not mine. That's okay. Um, it's a disclaimer. Just, You're putting it out there. Same. <laughs> so it opens up and then, oh, that way. I have like a steampunk oh, scene. I love that. So, because I like the idea of a portal. That's yeah. why, you know, it's flat back. So I could put it up against a book. I even took it to my local library here in Dobbs Ferry to do like photo shoots of it up against a bunch of encyclopedias and stuff. Is the inside of the door decorated as well? I don't remember that. It's just painted. It's painted. It looks like the inside is also decorated. It has dimension to it. It's awesome. Well, it has dimension. Yeah, I painted it. And then what's nice is here's the back. So I left it white because when you put a light behind this, it really like glows and you open it up and it glows from behind. So it's really nice to put a light directly behind it. I love it. I love it. I think that's fantastic. Does anybody, we did have a question about the rivets, which I think we, um, we answered. The rivets right. were dimensional paints. Mm -hmm. um, are there notches on the piece that fit the gears? Ooh, good so, question. Yeah, that was the tricky one. Like I said, this is just a piece of balsa wood that I sanded. I had, it's hard to tell, but the end is sanded really flat. So it slides in and out. And what I did is I took the gear. Now the gear is again, <laughs> <laughs> my husband's home. <laughs> just from 
from, um, what did I say, scrapbooking. Okay. So because the wood is balsa, I could roll the gear on the top of the balsa and where it nicked it, I just took um, a little bit of sanding paper and just like sanded the notch in so that, so that it does fit the gear. Got and it. What moves. Oh, that's the, just uh, amazing. Thing back and forth. I love that. Oh, May, you're awesome. Thank yes. you so much for sharing that with us. And um, yeah, I'm going to share one more picture after we're done. But thank you, May, for sharing that. We really, really appreciate you coming on and, and inspiring us. And um, I'm going to yes, go it's a pin hinge. <laughs> What's that? Oh, someone asked if it's on a pin hinge. Oh, and it's on it is. a pin hinge. Okay, got it. All right, cool. All right, thank you. I'm going to try and bring back my... What's it called? I'm going to try and bring back my... Um, <laughs> uh, my presentation, because I'm so not, what's it called? Uh, okay, hold on, hang on, hang on. Let's share my screen, let's see what happens. Ah, ta-da, you guys can see it, right? Um, thank you again, May, you're awesome! <laughs> we love May's doors, I think she should like, I don't know, maybe she should send, send us all the instructions. I don't wanna give her work to do, but anyway, it would be kind of cool to get the instructions. But this is sort of the, the class. I mean, you really can't tell how different everybody's doors are, but um, it was just awesome. May is a great teacher. She's also a great um, developer. I mean, she created this class. She created the door. I just love it. And it just tells you, you know, all just how much more you can do with miniatures. Um, so yeah. Oh, so SUNY is saying when you buy a whole door kit, it comes with the casing that is around the door. So it really is a nice total package. Yes, it is. Thank you, SUNY. I, I agree. Um, yeah, you can you can get the door with everything. Yes, May should do a Zoom class. Actually, keep keep chatting because I'm going to share the chat box with May after if you guys have any other sort of questions um, or comments or feedback for May. But um, I adore her. She's awesome. She's my mini partner. And um, yeah all of the above. All right, so now I wanted to share some really cool doors that I found on the internet um, and share with you just some crazy, amazing doors. This is by an artist, her name is Joji Bout. And I'm sure I'm killing her name, but this piece is actually at the um, Boston Museum of Fine Arts. Check out her Instagram. She not only is an amazing artist, she's got an amazing collection as well. Um, so she does just beautiful, beautiful work. I mean, you know, this is definitely high skilled, but these are pocket doors. Um, uh, and the, the curve, the arches, the molding, crazy amount of work, crazy amount of skill, really, really, really talented. Um, check her out. This is a, a more of her doors, but in inside, uh, uh, you know, I guess inside of her dollhouse, I'm not really quite sure, but you know, just the amount of work and the amount of com uh, detail is just incredible. This is just another shot of her work. Um, like I said, check her work out, check her Instagram out. I also wanted to share, um, this is, it's a Hobbit store. This is by Rebecca um, Reckon. Uh, if you've seen my past Meet the Miniaturists, uh, she's got an account called Melody of Miniature. She's a creating contest winner. And you could see why she created this beautiful, like, um, lizard's cave. And, but what I, what I love most about this is, is the door and the entrance. Cause this is really what it's all about. It's like creating this portal to just fill your imagination. So check out her work. Um, and no, no, no and, and there's no, um, Surprised that she's a winner of the creating contest with not only that door, but the rest of the piece as well. This is an artist, her name is Olga Serena. I'm not quite sure where she is. This is a different take on a door. And I thought like in my head about whether this was a door or a bookshelf, this is a door. <laughs> I hope you agree, but look at this. It's a secret door and a secret passage into another world. And, and again, going back to like the amount of detail and amount of work, so the way you get through this door is you have to like sort of, you know, move the picture and then the door opens. Again, I love things that move. Yeah, the secret door. We love the secret door. It is a, so you're calling it a secret door. So I'm all, I'm all right on that. Um, cool. All right, let me show you so, a few more. Um, this is a door by um, Haga Ichiyo. He is a Japanese artist. Um, 
uh, he is probably one of the most amazing miniaturists in the world. Um, for him, it's more than just the amount of detail, it's the craftsmanship and just the beauty of his work. So, um, and, and, and I don't know, I don't know how else to say it. It's just, it's beautiful. His miniatures are just beautiful. Um, and those are some of his doors. Next is, I'm gonna talk about the Tiny Door Movement. The Tiny Door Movement has actually been around for some time, but I'm gonna argue that it continues to this day. It really started in Ann Arbor, Michigan, at least the early beginnings, or at least the, um, the, the publicity around the Tiny Door Movement started there. It may have been there before, um, but it's there now. It's been going on for a few years and it continues. So in and around Ann Arbor, Michigan, there are tiny doors everywhere. And they're usually at the base of buildings, homes, and there are many of them. And there's, there are actually maps that you can get to, you can go discover and find them. And it is just, this is just, this is wonder to, this is, this just is wonder to me. And the reason why I, I tell you it's still happening today is this is an example of, of a tiny door out of Alden, Michigan. This was recently posted by Lady Delaney. I don't know if you know who Lady Delaney is. She's an amazing miniaturist. This is not her work, but this is her photograph. And it's just awesome. And it just, it just tells you that the movement is continuing and it's still happening today. And um, uh, heads up, I will have her on a Meet the Miniaturist very in the future, in the next month or so. Um, so, so details to follow on that. She's awesome. And then there's Tiny Doors Atlanta. Uh, if you don't know about them, they're a pretty extensive um, force, if you will, creating Tiny Doors everywhere. So check them out as well. Um, they're doing some amazingly creative things with doors and they have an awesome, awesome uh, um, Instagram account where you can see a lot of their work. So check them out. Um, La Nakila, thank you for your comment. I see you've got a tiny door at the coffee shop in the Santa Cruz. Awesome. I would love to see a picture. Send us a picture. Would, I, I mean, so this is, the, this is happening um, uh, everywhere. Uh, and it might not always, always, be, always be publicized, but it's happening. Um, I'm, Amanda, I'm not, I wasn't planning to post the links, uh, but maybe I should. I should, shouldn't I? Um, maybe I will do it in the email that you get that confirms that you came to this. So yeah, but in the meantime, I would um, try to snapshot the checkbox or, or link, press on it when you actually see it, if you really, really want it. Or send me a note, totally send me a note. I'm, I, I answer all my emails. Um, so that's Tiny Doors Atlanta. And then I just wanted to sort of wrap this up with, I don't know if you guys know who Rosa Moran is. She's, she's got an account called Simply Living Mini Designs. She's an interior decorator. She does miniatures as well. Very, very creatively. She has a TikTok account as well as Instagram account. We love Rosa. And I just wanted to share her mini doors that open up into, uh, their only way to describe it, they're a little art boxes is what they are. Uh, she creates these lovely mini rooms in these mini boxes and she shoots them just beautifully. I had her on as a, as a Meet the Miniaturist episode and she was awesome. And I totally uh, encourage you to check out her work as well. Um, and with that, I would like to say thank you. And if you have any questions, I'm really open to hearing what you, what you, um, what you might be wondering, thinking, uh, any questions you might have. Uh, I'm gonna shut my, I'm gonna stop sharing my screen and I will come up. And let's see if we have any questions. Hold on, hold on. I did, we did have Q and A. We have a box of Peterson. Okay, yep, Laura, I got your note. Could you just ask the usual? Hinges versus pins, oh my God. <laughs> that is a whole big conversation. So Laura wants to know, discuss the use of actual hinges versus pins. I don't know if I can cover that in here, but I, all of that here. Um, but what I would say is um, pins are a lot easier to work with than hinges. Um, hinges, to, in my opinion, are a little bit more advanced than, than pins. And I would say if you're starting out, use pins. Um, they, they work well. 
uh, but the, the, the difference is, you know, you don't get that level of detail when you have hinges, but they're harder to work with. Um, there's a whole extra level of, of detail with them and, and, and skill set needed to put them on, but can't be, it's not like it can't be done. I encourage you to, to go to the next level, but start with pins. Um, building a very modern, okay. I'm building a very modern dollhouse. Can I use sliding barn doors? Absolutely. I, I love the sliding barn doors and I encourage you to use them. I think the, the, the sliding barn doors is a really great modern twist on dollhouses today. Um, and a great way to sort of just that bringing dollhouse into today's world. Um, Kathleen is saying pins are fragile and can split the door. Yeah, they can, I agree. Um, they're, they're tough, but, but yeah, I mean, look, what I would ultimately say, practice, 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 and see what works best for you. Um, let's all go put a tiny door somewhere in our neighborhood. Suni, I love that idea. We should like totally blow out this tiny door movement um, and, and put tiny doors everywhere. Absolutely. Um, JL Shane is saying you can make faux hinges with paper. Absolutely, you could do that. You could cheat it and it'll be awesome. Um, Benny's been inspired to create a mini front door on a co-op building. I love that. Benny, take a picture and share it. I would love to see that. I would love to see that. Um, uh, waterproofing. Any question on weatherproofing doors? You mean if you? I guess I'm gonna. Uh, I'm gonna. I'm gonna assume weatherproofing doors that you're putting on the outside. Um, yeah, if you're doing like a tiny door and putting it outside, you would use. This, I would imagine. I'm not 100% sure that you would use the same weatherproofing materials and finishes that you would real wood. You want to make sure that wood is sealed so that no moisture gets in. So you would buy the same weatherproofing sealer that you would for real wood, and it should work for your mini door. So that's what I would say if you're doing a, a mini project and you're putting it outside. Absolutely. Um, okay, any other last questions? I use chi, Tyvek all the time for door hinges. It's flat and virtually indestructible. Interesting, interesting. I didn't, I'm gonna have to check into that. I did. I don't know about Tyvek. Thanks, Anita. Um, anybody else before we wrap up this awesome time we're spending together on this Sunday talking about miniatures? It doesn't get better than this, guys. I mean, just talking about miniatures, it's awesome. All right, guys, thank you so much for spending your Sunday afternoon with me. I'm going to try to get these links to all of you. Um, thank you again for joining me. I appreciate you all. And I hope you enjoyed this. And let's stay in touch. And you know where to find me. And enjoy the rest of your day, night, and morning. Guys, have a great one. Okay, bye.